Welcome back to the Celeste Minimum Interactions Challenge. Today we're looking at Chapter 2, Old Sight. Though first, I have some updates since the first video came out. To start with, I'm a dumb. I said that we can't use Return to Map to get back on the critical path after collecting certain collectibles since we'd interact with the winged golden berry again as soon as we wanted to dash. However, that's not actually correct. The winged golden berry only spawns when you start the level from the beginning, not from a later checkpoint. Since all three times that return to map would help come after the first checkpoint, we actually can use it to skip those interactions, dropping the full clear count down to 10. I was also able to remove a zipper and dash crystal from the second to last screen of 1B by supering off this block of wall bounds. Secondly, thanks to the comments on the last video, I've been able to remove a couple more interactions with the room. Firstly, I said that we don't have the stamina to get back with this barrier without a dash crystal, but that's actually not true. Thank you to Appear Yourself for telling me about this, and to Creepy Cat for the original video. Turns out it's actually not that hard, but I think this first jump is something suspicious. Anyway, now we're down to 9 for the full clear, and that's where it'll stay for now. Appear Yourself also told me that I can get past this zipper and when I dash this with a crouched climb jump off the side, or technically a crouched double corner boost plus slow fall. And after some pause buffering, yes we can. Though I should probably explain what that means, especially since I used a corner boost in the last video too and never really explained what was happening. Basically, if you hit a, the side of a block right at the top and immediately jump, you get a small speed boost. This trick also works well with buffered climb jumps since the window for performing them is nearly, if not completely, identical. Corner boosts just need more precise position. A double corner boost is the same thing, you just need two really fast jump inputs, usually through pause buffering. Slow fall is literally just holding jump while you're falling, and it makes you fall a tiny bit slower. We can also use crouch jumps to get onto this wall that I thought was too far out. You can only jump out four blocks from a wall before you start falling, so grabbing something five blocks out like this usually doesn't work. However, if we jump with a crouch hitbox, that's no longer a problem, since we'll stand up and gain the height needed to jump off this wall too. From there, it's all things we've seen before. Similarly, we can use crouch jumps to skip a crystal in this room, since these walls are no longer too far apart. An important note is that you can't just start crouching whenever you want. You need to start either on the ground or with a crouch dash. Furthermore, crouching stops as soon as we move down at all. Thus, we can't use this trick whenever we want, which will actually come into play. This isn't too bad though, since it decreases the amount of times you're going to need to do this insane pause buff nonsense. Finally, thanks to Munu, I was able to get through this screen without interactions. Instead of a grounded ultra, you need a crouch hyper bunny hop. This is done by jumping very briefly as you hyper dash, then touching the ground again to jump off. Usually bunny hypers are used to get even larger jumps than normal hypers, but here we just need to jump off thin air, so we use the speed to bring Kyrie time all the way to here. We still barely dodge the spikes though, which is why we also need to crouch. Here's our new list of totals, taking all of these new skips into account. By the way, there are actually still interactions that could be saved. I recently realized that the Minimum Dash community is actually really good at doing my job for me. They managed to save another crystal in this room and jump off this block to the end without a dash, which could save me a crumbling block. Unfortunately, I have absolutely no idea how either of these are done. Also, this was never meant to be a perfect run, and trying to piece together to transfer a bunch of prior tests would honestly just not be that entertaining. For this run, I won't be actively looking around the internet for ways to skip interactions, I'll just try to figure out what I can from my game knowledge of what I've seen before. Though I will continue to try to implement things that you guys mentioned in the comments. And no matter how sure you or I am that something is possible, if I can't pull it off, it's not going in the run. This is my run, not the best possible run. There are always going to be people with a lot more experience and tools that could improve on my nonsense. With all that out of the way, what's in store for us in Chapter 2? Thankfully, there aren't any new kinds of interactable objects. Green blocks aren't affected by us dashing through them, and battle isn't counted because she just follows you. Everything else we've seen before, so I guess we can just get straight into the ending percent portion. Start is incredibly easy and only takes interactive with a single breakable wall. The only things to possibly reach to this checkpoint are the wave dash in each of these rooms and phasing through solid matter. Intervention also starts off pretty nice, but then just throws switches at us and blocks the exit with blocks that move, so we'll have to collect them. Twice. Now that we're done with that, now it never mind, there's a third. The next room instead blocks our path with a falling block, and the secret side path only switches that out for a crumbling platform, so we'll have to interact with one of those. 
On the bright side, this time the devs were a little bit more creative than just throwing more switches. Are you kidding me? At least there's literally nothing in the wake. We finished 2A incredibly easily with six interactions and far too many switches. The full clear is a bit more interesting, though. We can't break the floor here, so we need to get this barrier from the other side. That's not the hard part, though. The hard part is remembering to leave out the same way so that we don't make this floor temporarily forget to exist. Besides that, skipping this zipper is incredibly trivial, and skipping this crumbling platform is incredibly not. Even if we immediately dash back up, we can't re-enter the previous room from here, so it seems the only way out is down. I tried using Bubbles Drop to unlock Intervention and immediately return to the start checkpoint, thus allowing a return to map and entering Intervention, but alas, that doesn't seem to work. Possibly because of the cutscene, more likely the floor is just too close to the room transition. The heart and cassette are trivial this time, though. As for the intervention barriers, none of them really even change. Some of them just don't introduce any interaction related challenges, and others outright ask you to avoid interactions. Since we were already doing that, nothing changes. The most interesting barrier here was actually this one up here, because returning from this room seems to require us to go through this crumbling block. Remember, the solution there is actually quite simple. Die. Respawn at the normal entrance to the room beneath the crumbling block and have no interactions. The awake berry is a bit annoying though, since it doesn't seem reachable without a dash, even if I do use other interactions. Therefore, this will take one interaction from making the awake berry fly. We can, thankfully, avoid any other interactions using this corner jump. With that, we have two interactions for the full clear. And we're onto the B side. The first time we have the chance to interact with something is this dash crystal. It does look like we needed to cross this gap, even with the dream jump type we learned at the beginning of the level. Of course, we can get around this by combining a dream jump with a dream jump. Yeah, that's literally it. We're doing dream jumble jumps. We get five coyote frames out of the dream block, plus four buffer frames just before we leave. Press the first jump in the buffer frames, the second jump in coyote time to get a huge leap out of the dream block. I recommend two jump buttons for this. In the next frame, we reach this spot. We need to somehow reach this wall, as otherwise we have no way past this session. Well, except dashing under, but we're trying not to dash here. Unfortunately, it's too high to reach from here, and our 5 block overhang trick isn't applicable here since we have no way to actually get here with the crouch hitbox. Thus, it appears we'll have to dash through and refill with the crystal. After that, the game seems to think that switches are a necessary part of level design, so we get to do this again. Our double drop trick takes us through this screen without interactions, and here we find a nice ledge to refill our dash shot. More switches? Are you kidding me? Again? No, no, I'm just not doing it anymore. This block isn't completely blocking our path, so let's just... Yep, yeah, there we go. A little bit later, we arrive here. Tries on my, it doesn't seem like we can avoid these spikes without dashing or a dream grab. Dream grab just makes us die to these spikes instead, and a dash makes us collect a crystal to continue. If I could somehow diagonal dash through this block, it should be doable, but for now, this will take an interaction as well. At least we get to do this, though. We get another free screen before- oh, come on! Yeah, we aren't getting around that block, so that's another set of switches. Hopefully, you're starting to see why a full set of switches only counts once. It's simply so the numbers don't get too ridiculous. Anyway, now that we're past that, we get to- oh, come on, now this is intentional. The devs even made sure you couldn't diagonal dash past it. Unfortunately for them, they underestimated my power to phase through solid matter. Well, at least it's not switches this time. This is definitely not climbable without a crystal. You simply can't get enough height before the block switch to make progress. However, proper min-maxing does let us finish with only a single crystal collected. Thus, we finish the B-side with three crystals and some ungodly number of switches. Finally, we have the C-side. The first screen is literally just the re-grab tutorial, so that's free. And the next is I am... Done with this! After collecting another freaking set of switches, we get to the last room. The devs seem to think that I should get switches again, but looking at the end, that's pretty clearly optional. I'll just skip over literally every intended strat here and just reach the end with a single crystal. Yeah, I can't skip this thing. Even dream double jumps don't go far enough to corner jump here, so that doesn't look like I have a choice. I'm pretty sure dream triple jumps are technically a thing, but even if they are, that's like... Two frame perfect inputs at least, 
And my boss buffering tests don't seem to like the idea anyway. Plus, they might not even get enough launch if they did work. I guess I'll put that down as some tasser is going to correct me on this. Anyway, that's chapter two. It's literally the easiest chapter in the game and the second fastest, in addition to having no problematic mechanics for this challenge, so I never really expected much from it. The scores are six for the A side, six for the B, two for the C, and two more for a full B. Even combined, that's less than one B alone. Hopefully chapter three will be a bit more interesting. Guess we'll have to wait and see.